As I begin today, uh, I'm trying to have the same attitude as I began the blocking. So it's not about getting something down perfectly um, in the underpainting. For me, it's more about just trying to get something down and searching for what for what's going to come. Mainly, I'm thinking about establishing the values, a hierarchy of values. Uh, I thought about that a lot uh, in the drawing, and so now I'm trying to transfer that understanding uh, into the canvas with, very, with some different considerations. First of all, the value scale of paint, of oil paint, is much wider than what we had in the drawing. So my darks are dark, and my lights are lighter. So I have to search and figure out exactly where those are. I began with my highlights to establish the lightest thing that I can make with my paint. Then I step down from there, and now I'm establishing some of the darks. Now also, because this is the underpainting, I know that my values aren't going to be uh, as dark or as bright as they will eventually be in the final painting. And that's just because the paint is thinner on the canvas, and I'm intentionally doing that. I'm intentionally making the paint thinner so that I can abide by the fat over lean principle. Fat over lean basically means that I want to have more oil in the upper layers of paint, so a fatter paint later on, and a leaner paint, less oil in the under layer, so that the, the, the initial layers dry more quickly. There's many ways to do underpaintings, but uh, I've chosen to do um, a full color underpainting. But really, the only way that you can, you can mess this up is if you lose your drawing. So I'm trying to be very careful about how I make my marks. I don't want any stray marks. Uh, or I don't want to uh, work haphazardly. So. But here I'm just basically trying to mass in the darks, get something down. Trying to establish the values and the overall light effect. Here I'm just thinking about what sort of value I might want for the background. Maybe a little bit of the color, though we can deal with that later. Thinking of trying to establish something that's darker than the uh, flesh tone so that that will stand out. But I don't want it to be so dark that uh, it feels like a, a really dark room or something. So. This initial stage of the underpainting, I'm really concerned more with value, establishing values than color. Color will come a little bit later.
Now as we begin the underpainting of the eyes, I'm trying to deepen the values and get them closer to where they will be in the end. Uh, but I'm trying to be extremely careful with my drawing. Uh, the slightest shifts can uh, change the expression or make it feel like she's cross-eyed. And, but I'm also trying to just uh, not obsess over that too much at this stage and know that it's going to be worked out. I know where the eyes are. Uh, I know the drawing is solid. And so as long as I maintain that basic setup, then we should be fine. Sometimes on this first day of underpainting, I think of it as like a modified grisaille. So it's a, sometimes people th say uh, dead coloring, um, meaning that I'm not shooting for the actual colors that I want, the actual chromas. I'm thinking more about the value scheme and setting it up for uh, glazing and scumbling later. So that's why it might seem a bit neutral at the moment. If I'm going to err on any side at this stage, I'm going to err on the lighter side. I'm going to try to keep my values lighter, especially in the lights. The reason for that is I'm trying to create almost as if it's back, a backlit effect, so that when I put a transparent or semi-transparent layer of paint over the top later in day two or day three, it'll almost have the effect uh, of glowing. And I can only get that effect if I have a lighter value underneath. So if I go too dark, then I can only correct the value with opaque paint. So here I'm trying to maximize my values. And I'll actually be able to get higher values and higher chromas if I do it this way than I would be able to otherwise if I were to use just opaque paint. Now here around the the corners of the eyes are really great spots to put in some, some cool. So I'm mixing a little bit of Viridian in with my paint. It's a really nice sort of uh, fleshy, veiny color. The shadow under the left eye socket is receiving a lot of reflected light from the illuminated portions of her face, so I'm trying to keep it a lighter value than what I would be putting down here uh, on the dark side of her face. And it's going to be a little bit warmer because it's the warm flesh color that's bouncing up in there. In terms of color at this stage, I, I might be thinking about setting up something of uh, color zones on the portrait. Um, so for instance, the forehead generally tends to be of a yellower cast, whereas the eye and nose portion tends to be redder. That's because there's more blood vessels uh, around the eyes and the nose. Maybe it receives a little more sun. You see that convention throughout a lot of uh, classical portraiture. So for instance, in the forehead, I'm mixing white with a little bit of the lead tin yellow, some of the yellow string that I have up here. And now on the nose, I'm mixing in white more with the vermilion. 